Ella Jamzan, uh, Dr. Ella Jamzan, Assistant Professor of Design, Engineering, uh, Design for Sustainability at TU Delft. Yep. And formerly of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, yep. which we've already discussed okay. between ourselves. All right. So what, what did you make of what you just saw? Yeah, I thought it was a, a really good start of the day. I, um, a lot of very um, stimulating thoughts. Um, Were you familiar with the, many, many of the talks or the concepts you heard? I was familiar with uh, provenance. Yeah. Uh, so I, I knew about what Jesse Baker does, but I, uh, I still learned a lot of new ideas. So this, this topic of uh, how you use blockchain for circular economy, for example, is one I was, I was recently curious about. And so this gave some interesting new directions, like the, the bit she said about uh, the tokens that you can use to also spread more the value and okay. the incentives. That's something I hadn't, um, I wasn't really aware of. So I, I knew about the fact that you could use the uh, blockchain as a way to, to track maybe information in a more reliable way. But uh, so it, it, did, did uh, you know that in Estonia you can do everything online except to get married and buy a house? No, I did not Does know that. Does that <laughs> Um, yeah. So the, sure. my, my, the reason I ask is that there is uh, something, I mean, I think Martin did a good job of explaining what the potential benefits could be of this digitization of public life. I mean, doing a tax return in, how long did he say? He said three minutes or something like that. Mm. Sounded pretty positive. Yeah. But is there, a, is there a danger that... Um, it all gets a bit impersonal. That I mean, he. Yeah, it's the only danger, there, of course, is it is it super personal right now doing a tax return? But sure, uh, and and also the, the data, I guess, is a concern for people as well. Yeah, I mean, it's also does it um, lower the barrier for these things, or does it mean that when there is a hurdle, it's harder to go through because there isn't a person to solve it with you? That I guess it's a question of how it's being implemented in practice. But for someone who's kind of move to different countries a few times, having uh, a much more automatized system is, is quite appealing. Okay. Uh, and uh, we, we were also saying um, before you got here that we were quite surprised, I was quite surprised to hear two speakers say, this is nothing to do with technology, pretty much. For you, what are the links between technology and circular economy? Um, I'm going to reflect on the thing you said that they say it's not about technology and they Ignoring say it's really about question. culture yeah sure yeah culture and all because so i was earlier this week at this uh, circular economy symposium in exeter and the theme about um like having more talk about the the people side of thing was a really recurring theme across uh across that discussion and so it was interesting to see here as well saying you know we talk about technology and we nearly make these things sound like they are like they can be looked at from nearly an abstract perspective and see these technologies, this data, it's all happening automatically, but actually like the, the, the people question behind are, are what's central to this and the technologies have implications on the people and, and, and vice versa. So, so do you think I, that's coming more compared with, I mean, you've been uh, working in circular economy space for a while. Do you think that's more prevalent now than it has been in previous years? I think there's, at least in what I'm seeing, and I hear more voices kind of bringing back the let's let's not let's let's uh, let's not decouple the people question from these discussions. Well, I think it was prevalent before, and it's it's something we probably have to keep reminding ourselves. You know, what does it mean for different aspects of uh, what people do, whether it's entrepreneurship or effects on inequality or these kinds of things. They keep. Yeah. Back. One thing I always think about the technology conversation is, you know, what's the alternative? Not, not developing new technologies and not advancing these technologies, which I think is why these people, why we always have these conversations about well, what does that technology mean or what does it do? What does it mean for people and how do we, what values do you, we attach to those technologies? Which is what's yeah. interesting that came out so strongly in all those conversations. Last yeah. question, Ella, before we have to uh, have to move on. Lab-grown meat. Are you yeah, excited right. about your first? Uh, I um I had a slight. You've had it. No, no, I had oh. a slight. Well, during this presentation, I did wonder because we had this very big picture of lab-grown meat on a very big screen. It wasn't the most appetizing. Yeah, I had a slight 
uh, idea that maybe there was a hidden agenda of turning the audience into vegetarians. Like I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not very keen on a burger right now. Like. You thought a, a company making lab-grown <laughs> meat was trying to create a room full of vegetarians? Well, you know, maybe that's not the real. Uh, well, we've goal. got Erin Kim <laughs> on later on, so right, we'll, 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 we'll give a bit of feedback on her strategy. She did say that particular one didn't taste didn't very taste nice. Yes, of that course. Was. Ella, so thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and yeah. uh, I'm sure we'll have a few uh, wines later on. Yes, bye I look bye. forward to that. Thanks, Ella. See you later.